Let's make a Chinese lantern. The knot will be imported from a previous tutorial, so be sure to check out that video. Add a UV sphere and lower the division X to 12. Use the green dot on the gizmo to flatten the sphere. If we uncheck constant density, we can also change the division Y separately. Click validate. Add a new cylinder and lower the X division to 12. Use the green and red dots on the gizmo tool to scale the cylinder. And move the cylinder to the top of the sphere. Turn on hole and using the blue control point, adjust the thickness based on your preference. Then duplicate this cylinder and put it at the bottom of the sphere. Add a cube and set the X division to zero. And turn on mirror. Go to the top view. Using the blue and red dots on the gizmo, scale this cube to fit into the top cylinder. With snap turned on, set the value to 45. Rotate the shape 45 degrees so that it forms an X with its reflection. From the side view, adjust the height of the X and move it back into the cylinder. When satisfied, click on clone and duplicate this object to the bottom cylinder. I simply merge some of these objects to keep my scene organized, but this is optional. Add a new cylinder, uncheck constant density, and lower the Y and Z as much as possible. Also, lower the division X in a way that still keeps the cylindrical shape. I find that a value of 6 works best. The reason for the small poly count is because we'll be repeating this shape many times. Shrink the radius and length of this cylinder, and reposition it so that it dangles from the bottom cylinder. From the bottom view, we'll use radial symmetry to repeat this around the rim of the cylinder. Turn on mirror, and then under the symmetry tab, turn off any planar symmetry and increase the radial Y, and move it to the rim of the big cylinder. Now that there's a better picture of these dangling cylinders, I can readjust the thickness on the side view. From the bottom view again, maximize the radial Y. After validating, clone and rotate these cylinders from the bottom view. This way, we'll have more vertical dangling cylinders. Merge these two sets of cylinders. To add the Chinese knot to the scene, click on Add to Scene and pick the Chinese knot. Depending on the export settings for the other file, you might need to do some cleanup work, removing some unwanted shapes or merging. After the cleanup's done, resize and position the knot. Don't worry if it's disconnected from the lantern, we'll fix that in a bit. Also make sure that it's centered from the bottom view. Add a new cylinder and resize it, then place it below the Chinese knot. To keep it low poly, lower the division X, Y, and Z. Click on clone and then move the clone slightly upwards, then readjust the size so that it is smaller but a little bit wider than the previous cylinder. Find the dangling cylinders that we made previously, duplicate them, and move them downwards. Using the green cone on the gizmo tool, we can scale these cylinders inwards so that they fit. I decided to turn off wireframe at this point so that it doesn't get too cluttered to look at. Finally, we need to make sure the knot is actually connected to the lantern. With the mask tool, tap on the vertical bar and click on split under the mask settings. This will move the cylinder to a separate object. Now with the gizmo tool, I can scale it vertically so that it is long enough for the lantern. And here's what it looks like after some repositioning. Note that it also goes through the top of the lantern. For each object in the scene, under the material settings, play around with the shading. Flash shading has a cool effect for the lantern sphere. I also experimented with adding multi-res and then turning on flash shading. With the tube tool, make sure it's set to every point for snapping. With path selected, draw two dots to form a line down the center. Add some more control points down this line in a way that aligns with the horizontal parts of the sphere. Click on the green dot. If you want a flatter tube from the side view, scale downwards with the green dot on the gizmo. Note that you'll have to readjust the control points. In the grid icon, uncheck constant density. Lower the division Y so that it matches the number of horizontal lines on the lantern. It helps to turn on wireframe. Turn on mirror and under the symmetry tab, turn off planar symmetry and increase the radial Y so that it lines up with the vertical lines on the lantern. In this case, there are 12 of them. 
click validate. Now we can paint the objects based on preference. For the flower patterns on the lantern, I went with a flower brush that I made in Procreate. Then I set it to grab dynamic radius. In the grid icon under dynamic topology, turn on enabled and increase the detail. In the left bar, turn off symmetry, and now we can add some patterns to the lantern. Although the original sphere is low poly, as you can see in the wireframe, dynamic topology has added vertices depending on where the paint will be. Optionally, make some final adjustments such as turning on post-processing, experimenting with material settings, and adding point lights. Using refraction with absorption turned on has a cool effect.